Today's lesson objective is 6.3d. We're going to add, subtract, multiply, and divide integers fluently. First off, let's get to know what an integer is. It's defined as the set of counting, or natural numbers, their opposites, and zero. So here in the example, we show negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. The three dots indicate that this pattern can continue on infinitely in this direction as well as in the opposite direction. The set of integers is denoted by the symbol z. So if you ever see the capital letter z, that's the set of integers. Let's start by looking at addition and subtraction. Now here's here a couple of um, visual ways to help understand how this works. When we're talking about addition, if we're doing negative 7 plus 2, we can use a number line to represent this problem. This problem would say, first go to negative 7, so we start here at 0, we travel to negative 7, and then we want to add 2, meaning that we need to go 2 back to the right. And wherever that ends, that would be the result of this problem. So this one would result in negative 5. This can also be modeled by using two color counters. Two color counters are simply red on one side, yellow on the other side. We generally say that the red represents our negative values and yellow represents our positive values. So first we'd want to build the problem. Negative 7 plus 2 means we need 7 red chips and 2 yellow chips. Now the way these work is anytime you have a yellow and a red chip, um, those create what's called a zero pair, meaning that they basically cancel out or equal zero. Okay, think about it. Negative 1 plus 1 would cancel each other out. They're opposites, right? So basically, our to way we to solve this is to remove all zero pairs from the model. So we take away this zero pair, we take away this zero pair, and whatever remains, that represents our answer to this problem. So we have one, two, three, four, five negative chips remaining. So the answer again is negative five. Okay, in simple equation form, this is all we're saying. That anytime we add negative seven plus positive two, it equals negative five. You can see the same thing with the subtraction problem. Here we have negative 7 take away negative 4. So again, the problem is telling us to start at negative 7. So we travel from 0 to negative 7. Now, here's where it gets a little confusing. This says subtract negative 4. Normally, if we subtract, we go left. But because we're subtracting a negative number instead of subtracting a positive number, we're actually going to travel to the right. Subtracting a negative 4 is like adding a positive 4. So we're actually going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 back in this direction, and where we wind up is our result. So we wind up at negative 3. Okay. Um, modeling with the two color counters, you again by starting, start out by creating your seven, seven negative chips. Okay. But again, because we're actually taking away a negative 4, remember negative just means opposite, right? So the opposite of negative 4 is positive 4. So when you subtract a negative 4, that's really like putting four positive chips into the problem. Okay, again, we remove the zero pairs, see what remains, and you can see there's three negatives remaining. So in equation form, negative 7 minus negative 4 equals negative 3. Or another way to think of this problem is when you have two negatives side by side like that, it really is the same thing as saying negative 7 plus 4 instead of negative 7 minus negative 4. And so you can see the result a little bit clearer is negative 3. Now these are the actual rules um, that we use when adding and subtracting integers. Okay, I provide you the rule along with an example of each. So the first one says if a pair of add-ins has the same sign, then the sum will have the sign of both add-ins. So basically if I add two positive numbers together, I should get a positive result. Or if I add two negative numbers together, I should get a negative result. Um, that would make sense if you think of it in terms of like money. If you owe somebody three dollars and now you owe them six more dollars, you don't all of a sudden have money, right? You just owe more money. So you would owe $9. That's the idea there. Uh, the next one says if a pair of add-ins has opposite signs, then the sum will have the sign of the add-in with the greatest absolute value. So here in this first example, we're adding negative 3 and a positive 6. So you can see that signs are different. One's negative, one's positive. So we're actually going to take the difference of those two numbers. Okay. So 6 take away 3 gives us 3. Now to determine what the sign is, we have to look at which of these is a larger value. 6 is a larger value than 3, correct? It has a larger absolute value than 3. 
keep in mind when I say absolute value, I'm just saying the distance the number is from zero. So six has a greater distance from zero than three. And so that tells me my final result should be positive. Okay, here in this example, positive three plus negative six, Again, the signs are different, so I'm taking the difference of the two numbers, 6 and 3 is 3. But again, my 6 has a greater value, but this time it has a negative sign on it. So that means since it is a further distance from 0, I'm going to take that sign and put that on my answer. So this one would have an answer of negative 3. Okay, again, I like to think of it in terms of money. That helps me to make sense of this. If I have $3 in my pocket and I owe somebody $6, I don't have enough money in my pocket, do I? So I'm actually still going to owe them 3 more dollars. That's kind of the way I like to think about this. Uh, finally, this one says a subtraction problem may be rewritten as an addition problem by adding the opposite of the integer following the subtraction symbol. Then just apply the rules for addition. So this is a great way to eliminate subtraction um, from the problems and just deal with addition only. Here, the original problem was 3 take away 6. What this rule is saying is that can be rewritten as 3 plus negative 6. Again, you're changing the minus to a plus sign and you're changing the sign of the integer that follows it. So this was a positive 6, it's now a negative 6. And you can do this with any subtraction problem. Here's another example. 3 take away negative 6. Again, I changed the minus to a plus sign, and I changed the sign of the number that follows. So it was negative 6, so it's now positive 6. So this problem can be rewritten as 3 plus positive 6. Okay, I find that very helpful, because then you're just having to learn the rules for adding if you change all your subtraction problems to addition problems. Now let's look at multiplication and division. Here you have the multiplication problem negative 3 times positive 4. Verbally, what is that saying? Well, remember, the negative sign just means opposite, right? So we're saying the opposite of three groups with four positives in each group. Because remember, multiplication is just groups, right? So this is saying the opposite of three groups with four positives in each group. Well, start by making four positives in three groups, and then find the opposite of that. So change it from positives to negatives. So negative 3 times positive 4 would equal negative 12. Okay, here in this division example, you got negative 8 divided by negative 4. Again, because negative means opposite, we're saying the opposite of negative 8 is separated into four groups. Okay, so negative 8, here you got negative 8 chips being divided into four equal groups, and because we're dividing by negative four, we want the opposite of whatever that result is. So that changes our negatives to positives, and so the result would be a positive two. Okay? All right, so let's see what the rules say. Okay, so these are some the rules that we follow, and there's some examples to go along with it. Here you got, if two rational numbers have the same sign, then the product or quotient is positive. So in other words, basically a positive number times a positive number should give you a positive result. Or a negative number times a negative number should also give you a positive result. Okay? Uh, if two rational numbers have opposite signs, then the product of, or the quotient will be negative. So here you have positive times a negative, so it makes a negative result. Or if you have a negative times a positive, you also get a negative result. Okay? Um, one thing that helps me remember these first two rules here um, is by looking at a tic-tac-toe board. I know it seems crazy, but this only works for multiplying and dividing. Please never try this for adding and subtracting integers. If you make a tic-tac-toe board like I have up here in the top right-hand corner, and you draw um, positive signs, making a diagonal tic-tac-toe, then fill in the remaining blanks with negative signs. Okay, this little tic-tac-toe board will help you remember these first two rules. If you read it like a book from left to right, you can see that a positive multiplied or divided by a negative number gives you a negative result. A negative number multiplied or divided by a positive number also gives a negative result. And then a negative number multiplied or divided by a negative number makes a positive result. You can even go diagonal. A positive times a positive equals positive. So this little tic-tac-toe board is an easy way to remember these first two rules. Okay, these last two are just showing, because typically when we're dealing with multiplication division, uh, we're dealing with more than just two factors. Very often we're dealing with three, four, or even five factors that we're trying to multiply or divide together. So these last two rules help you just to remember what to do in that scenario. Um, when multiplying or dividing two or more rational numbers, 
the product or quotient is positive if there are no negative signs anywhere in the problem or if you have an even number of negative signs. So here you can see in this first example there's no negative signs, so of course the result will be positive. But in the second example here, we have four factors here. Um, so it's an even number of factors that are all negative numbers. So if you have an even number of factors that are negative numbers, the results will always be positive. Okay, then our last one says when multiplying or dividing two or more rational numbers, the product or quotient is negative if there is one negative sign or an odd number of negative signs. So here in my first example, you have just the one negative three and the other two are positive. So the result then will be negative. Okay, or in this last example here, you got four factors again, but in this case, only the first three are negative. So you have an odd number of negative factors. So that means that you have a negative result in that example. Finally, I want to leave you with a helpful website that I found online. Um, you can just go to that link that's indicated. Um, it has some great uh, animations showing use of the number line, the counters, uh, when dealing with integers. Um, it also has a pair of fact sheets if you go to the very bottom of the, of the site. Um, that just have, does a great job of summarizing the rules that we just talked about in this presentation. Um, thank you very much for your time.